remember, the house is mostly known for, of course, Rachel. Um, legend and lore, Christmas time, 1912, Rachel came into this room to sneak a peek at Christmas presents. Um, something spooked her. She bumped into a table that had a lit candle on it, um, causing her nightgown to catch fire. We did have two chairs sitting over here. They are upstairs, they're the cane back chairs that make that, that sound when you sit in them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes at night we would hear as if somebody came in here and was just sat down on those chairs and was like watching us sleep. Um, something pulls at our blanket, something tugs at our feet. And we're always over here looking at this staircase and I can't tell you the number of times that we've seen non-human and human shadows and apparitions over here on the stairs. Not to mention the numerous footsteps, um, odd lights, odd noises um, all throughout here. Um, you heard a, a little girl whisper in your ear. Um, she said, hey, wake up. Um, we both had our name called and thinking it was the other one. The chandelier got smacked. Um, it was like something was really thick and heavy and it just all it was like over here and it just smacked these crystals like violently i'm not just talking like you know a little tap and as soon as it was like ready to swing up it was like something over here just came in and just stopped it and of course we're laying on the floor um also when nobody's been upstairs this chandelier has known to just start swinging and these are just just the tip of the iceberg of the things that happens to us. I mean, I don't have time to, I mean, anymore we just don't mention things. Um, There's a painting at the top of the steps. Um, a previous owner was an artist and he had a vision and he claims that his vision was this, what he painted here and he says it depicts one of the bodies buried in the backyard. Um, we found this axe right here underneath these stairs. Um, we did find out the history behind that axe. There were two cousins down here that got into an argument, and one of them threw it and then went back. Might have been more to be a female body buried over there in the dirt. This room is what we call Big Black's room. Um, I think that this was the waiting room for Dr. John. He started his practice in 1899. He went to the patients, and toward the end of his practice, which was 1937, the patients would have come here. Um, they wouldn't have allowed the sick and the injured to come in the front door and sit in the parlor. Um, we do call this room Big Black's room because this is initially where Big Black was first seen. Um, the psychics that we've had in the house say that Big Black is not animal or human. This room and the room we're getting ready to go into come with a warning for the ladies in the group. Um, unless you want it to happen, because if you want it to happen, it doesn't seem to happen. But if you're in this room without a male present after dark, but it has been noted enough that we have to say this, that women seem to get grabbed or broke or touched inappropriately. It's happened enough to where we have to, you know, the owner wants the women warned that it's mm -hmm. a possibility. So. Um, also, there's been numerous reports of an apparition that comes through this door and then goes into this one and picks up some sort of object and then exits. Um, what else? This is where just <laughs> this is really the vibe in here. Hello and welcome to St. Croix Paranormal's TV show. I'm Jill. Teresa. I'm Krista. I'm Steve. I'm Stephanie. And today we're going to talk about a really fun visit to the fourth most terrifying place in America, and that was Whispers Estate in Mitchell, Indiana. We had an awesome time, and it was just a really, really creepy, interesting place history on the mm -hmm. house. It built in the <laughs> 1900s and it was run by Dr. John Gibbons and he was pretty much an unethical doctor as far as what they can tell. Um, he did some unethical um, surgical procedures as well as some unethical things with his female patients. Uh, any of the unnecessary amputations that he would do, the body parts would be in the back bar and now there's a garage on top of it and they just called it the pit and they threw the body parts into there. A lot of deaths, a lot of history going on. Um, I believe four of them are buried out in the backyard as well. So we did get a lot, a lot of interesting experiences. Rachel's room, I didn't like. I did not like it at all. And I know 
what are, what's everybody else's feelings on that? When whenever you entered her room, I was just like, oh, creepy. As soon as we walked in, I was like, uncomfortable, partly because all the dolls that were, you know, on the dressers oh, and yeah. the bed, oh, yeah. and they had one that was just sitting on the pillows that if you went up to or you touched, it would giggle. Yes, and I thought creepy. it was the it was creepiest. <laughs> However, oh, it, did make, it scary, did make yeah. us buy one for our next investigation, yes, so we do have our own new giggle doll. So watch for that. It also giggled when we were doing the walkthrough. Yes, yeah. when we were doing the walkthrough, yes. it went off by itself. There was uh, another time we caught it. Where nobody's in the room, and the doll just goes off by itself. It's it's just really really creepy um, that she's in. There. This is Rachel's room. Um, I'm glad to know more. This is a picture of up here um, in the Mitchell Commercial newspaper. Um, the headline supposedly read, A Mitchell Girl Dies in Holiday Fire. I'm getting back to what happened to Rachel. Um, and again, legend and lore. After three days, Dr. John came up here and he administered an overdose of morphine. Um, we like to think that that's a mercy killing but he did it because he viewed her as damaged goods and did not want her ruining his reputation. Um, we had a guest one time bring Rachel a brand new doll at the beginning of her stay. Um, the next morning she came up here to tell Rachel goodbye and she noticed that the doll she brought up here was missing. Um, she came back about three months later. Nobody was on the second or third floor. Everybody was downstairs. Um, she just happened to say, hey Rachel, what do you look like? Um, there was a commotion at the front staircase. They all ran over there, and the doll that the guest brought was there. However, was not new any longer. It was actually burnt, and it's this doll right here that Sandra's shining her light on. We call her the burnt doll. Um, when they oh, she's creepy it, looking as it is. <laughs> oh. When we went to pick it up, or they went to pick it up, it was not hot to the touch, however. Oh, that's a creepy, creepy doll. Huh? Um, there's a giggle doll over here on the bed that Rachel loves to use. And you can just press on her tummy. No, I hate dolls. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was very skeptical about these beach balls on the end of the bed, okay? Um, they'll stay up there forever, and then all of a sudden, they get knocked off. We started having people videotape these beach balls, and all of a sudden, uh, sure enough, on camera, you see as if there's a hand pressing down on top of these balls. And then... Did somebody touch that doll? <laughs> no. Aw, thank you. We've seen uh, wet handprints on the footboard here. Um, right here is another giggle doll. Oh, that oh, one is like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, Dr. Gibbons' room, the newest member here, Teresa, she ended up with a something happening to her. You want to kind of discuss what was going when we were going on the, the tour of the house just to get a few feel yeah. for where everything was at? Absolutely. They were just leading us into the room, kind of giving us a little background on what happens there. And I got a very warm um, sensation. I didn't want to stop everything and have everybody look at it I kind of pointed it out and said hey my back is you know yeah you came up and you lifted your shirt and I'm like do you see something I'm like well it looks like you've been scratching you said you haven't been scratching and yeah you yep. did and the scratches go up and down and they were pretty you know a good two three inches high so um, so that had happened and then as soon as we had got done with our walkthrough and um, we had you know came out into where all of our equipment was I asked Stephanie to lift up my shirt and look and that's when we found three um, pretty distinct long scratches on my back so um, we photographed those um, and then yeah, we'll, ta we'll take those. a look yeah. at the, those intense are. too you know the itching and the and the burning feeling I mean mm -hmm. it, it, it came on very sudden and then you know later I just I couldn't you know I couldn't get rid of that feeling and so that's why I had Stephanie look at it well and when I originally saw it you know it wasn't very bright it was just, you know, I saw the three vertical scratches, all evenly spaced, like, you know, 
someone had their hand, you know, apart. Mm -hmm. right. And when we took photographs with the professional camera later on, it was more red, more inflamed. They were raised. As they well. were raised, yes. Yeah. I was just kind of sitting on the bed and Krista was talking with me and she's like, can we sit on this bed? And I'm like, yes, we can. No, what can't we sit on? You said, oh, it's the exam table. But what I find interesting in the intermix of this whole conversation that whispered right into the microphone that I had here, like, like I have now, say, play with me. There was another voice recorder on the bed right next to me and it didn't pick it up. So whoever said it was either sitting next to me standing right by me and just right into my mind. This is what we call Dr. John's room. Um, the women getting touched inappropriately. Um, because of the common MVPs in this room and the bathroom behind me, which are of women crying out for help, we've noted um, that women are getting um, bruised in this room. Um, because of those things, it would kind of maybe lead us to believe that Dr. John was somewhat of a pervert, maybe. I don't know, but it's possible. Um, it's possible he took liberties with his female patients and then he had to perform illegal abortions. On the desk over there is a document that was found um, at the Morris County Museum. Helen, the adopted daughter, tried to have Dr. John committed. <coughs> Um, it's a very interesting read. It says things such as um, he spoke incoherently at times, he was addicted to drugs, he tore his clothes, um, he lost the use of his right hand, I believe, he was uh, felt guilty for his previous actions, um, all these things. I believe what happened is I believe he asked Helen to drop that and he would will her the house. And that's exactly what he did. He willed her this house for one dollar. Um, and at the time, she was recently divorced with a two-year-old. She got rid of this house immediately. She had it less than ten days. Which would indicate possibly that something happened to her in this house or between her and Dr. John. So, um, In the backyard, it's reported there are four graves. Those are to be Rachel her brother and her parents, and underneath the garage is the um, mass pit grave. Whenever the doctor did any type of surgery and, you know, he needed to amputate something, um, they was, it was just check it out there. Um, paranormal wise in this room, um, there's a candle over there on that dresser. Um, it's got a chunk taken out of it. That was thrown across the room by an unseen presence. Those blocks have been thrown at people. Those jacks have been thrown. The bed, oftentimes we'll hear as if somebody is sitting on it or getting up. Um, the crutches over there, and you're more than welcome to move them, um, they used to be over here, and they would move. <laughs> I put them over here, and it, uh, literally this lady, she said, those crutches, one of them like, was thrown at her. Um, growls are heard all throughout the house. Um, EVPs, of course, whispers, and people get touched all throughout the house, okay? This bathroom here is where I think um, the operating room was. We did discover drain in the middle of the floor back in the day. The operating tables, they had to have the bucket to, uh, up yep. for the blood to drain down into. Shortly after, the homeowner bought the house, and he took a shower in this room. Um, he had a massive nosebleed. Um, we've had several staff get scratched in the shower. Um, that cabinet over there has opened up on its own and we've had numerous attempts of um, somebody trying to open this door here. There's a red mark, but did you scratch? Our most active room that night was the servants' quarters. Uh, we did have quite a bit of activity that happened there. There's a, a closet and BP 
people that work there are afraid of this closet. On a spirit box, we had the door wide open. Teresa was brave enough to sit inside of it. And you hear somebody say, shut this door. <laughs> and then probably about a minute or two after that, um, Teresa experienced the most terrifying thing she's probably experienced in her life. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Teresa. Yeah, very exciting, but <laughs> very scary. So um, I was sitting in the closet. I had my foot kind of, you know, propped up against the door because I didn't want to be slammed in like the ladies said happened. So I'm sitting in there and when you had that um, spirit box going, I ask a question out loud. I say, do you, do you care if I'm sitting in your room or something? In your, in your closet in or your something closet, like that. Yeah. You heard the um, shut this door and then it was about three minutes. And the interesting thing is, is I popped in that closet with you for just a few minutes to take some photographs and something in my head said get out of this closet and so I did and then what happened to you? Well I'm sitting there and um, I feel a pressure it was so hard it almost felt like the chair was being lifted and forcefully pushed out just someone came up and just went BAM as hard as they could and I went flying launched I mean it wasn't just a tip over and they wanted me out now and so I launched um, you went out to the railing. How yeah, far? It was a good was like four feet. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. It was because yeah, she's she was way back farther in, almost to the, the edge closet. of the closet, yep. and now she's by the railing. Yep. And I had just stepped out, and maybe thirty seconds gone by, and I had my back to her, and all of a sudden I hear bam, and I turn around, and she's laying on the floor, and she's freaking out, and I'm shutting off the spirit box, and <laughs> Ted and Teresa, and it was it was it was really scary, and and my. You feel violated, you know, and you don't know what to say. But as soon as you came over to me, I just started bawling. It was, it was scary, you know. And then when you collect yourself, then you're, you know, you're like, wow, because I mean, that just doesn't happen to people. Same thing too. Just before um, Teresa had gotten thrown out of the closet, the workers they have a special parlor that they sleep in. They stay out of your way. They don't bother you. Um, but when she was meeting us at the bottom of the stairs as we were coming down the stairs. And she said that she was having a very vi vivid dream, and that's very common in this house, um, that you have very vivid type dreams. And she felt that we were in danger and that um, the house was kind of upset with us running the spirit box that late at night. And so I, I think it's just kind of a combination of all things. I don't know if, if any of it's rel relative or not, uh, but I just found it interesting that she had this dream that we were in trouble, and then all of a sudden, you know, Teresa's thrown out of the closet. So. It, it all kind of correlates a little bit together. This is what we call the servants' quarters. Um, back in the day, um, the front staircase actually would have been roped off and only used for special guests. Um, these stairs here, they go down into the kitchen. Gary's father, Virgil, he came back to the house. They had already moved out, but they still had some um, items stored here. He was coming back to get a hammer and a ladder. Upon opening that door, Virgil had a fatal heart attack. Um, this is what we call Virgil's closet. This is the bad mojo. After we cleaned out that room, um, and the first group that investigated, the girl went in there and she got her hair pulled. Then the next group, um, an individual, got a small scratch. Um, then we had a person uh, standing over here, she was standing there taking pictures and something from inside the closet pushed her out here on the floor and she ended up with, it looked like infantigo on her arm. Um, and then it just escalated to where we have had a 19 year old girl in there get choked. Um, she was unable to breathe, she had to leave the house, they had to take her home. Um, we have also had a staff member get locked in that closet, and the lock is on the outside. We don't ever come up here alone and go in there. Um, and I, I do ask you this, as you investigate this evening and everything, um, please make sure when you are done that that set of doors is shut and locked. Because when we come up here, and it's one thing to find, you know, Gary's door open or even Jesse's, but when you walk in here, and those doors are open, it's just, it's just like game over. We've all had personal experiences with that closet. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that something inside of there hits those doors violently trying to get them open.
Teresa. Oh, it pushed the deck of the chair really hard. Ah, oh, no, I can't get up. I hurt my knees. Hold on. Okay. That was hard. That pushed hard. It like lifted the back and just forced. Do you think that fell? Cause it's such a. You sit there for a minute. You think cause this is kind of a floppy ass chair, or I mean, it, it did, I didn't just tip over. It was I mean, more like a this. Yeah. Who pushed her? I just don't think that would have just. Well, no, because you kind of came. I mean, you're. I mean, you're here. And now you're here. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I mean, that's not little. just, that's just not a... That freaked me out a little bit. Sorry. I was not expecting that. No. You're shaking. Oh, you all right? So yeah. That just scared me. You're all right. Come here. Oh, that camera was so running. Oh, yeah. We might have got you. Is your knee okay? Yeah. I don't like this closet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You stay in there. Okay, I don't really, I don't really don't want to be up here anymore. I'll come up here. Okay, in this house, people get touched. They get touched a lot. I was touched pretty much from the time I got into that house. I mean, you get the most intense goosebumps. I kept feeling like, you know, when your hair goes in front of your face and you're like, and it was so annoying and you, and you would see me doing that most of the night and, and everybody had experiences of, of touching. Yep. Starting from the walkthrough mm -hmm. all night, it just from start to finish, the, the touching nonstop. You had a couple of times where you're like, my hair is tangling. The whole time, right, right on my cheek, it felt like someone just hit, was going like this. Yep. So yep. you probably see me going like this a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do. We do got some footage of that. The the most irritating one, and I and I, and I think they were doing this on purpose. They did tell us um, if there's not a male present, more things happen to the women. And uh, what was going on with you, Steve? I think they purposely did this to get you out of the house. It's the same thing that you guys had, but mine was more intense because it would go all the way from the base of my neck, all the way around the back, all the way up the back of my head, all the way around the face, and it was consistent nonstop. It was so annoying. It's like I can't even film no more because it's just that feeling all the time. So finally you just give up. I would go outside, get to the curb, it would stop. You even tried popping up your collar. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, would, I would pull up my collar all the way up to my thing, button the top button, and it was still so intense that it's like I can't film no more. I have to go outside. I'd get readjusted and wait. When it would subside, then I just, it's on you nonstop again. You just, it's one of those things where it's so annoying, you just got to stop. Mm -hmm. So you're not focused inside of the house no more. You're not even focused on the investigation because you're so upset and annoyed you just want it to end. It's a torture. <laughs> yeah, we have we have quite a bit of Steve's where it's it's bugging me again. It's not leaving me alone. And Teresa's like, they're touching you again. And I mean, it went on all night. Even Steph had a couple of instances on that. Well, I I, I have long hair, and I kept it back in a ponytail because I am filming. You know, I can't afford to get hair caught anywhere. And I mean, I pull my bangs up too. Everything was pulled back. But it still felt like, you know, there's hair falling in my face when nothing can possibly fall because mm -hmm. I've got it, you know, shellacked back. Yeah, and we had yeah. it in the attic, too. You're like, is somebody touching my face? And then you had a couple of times where you're like, I'm feeling really cold right now. Yeah. Just on one side. And, and we caught org photos and, and videos upstairs. It was just, um, just the most intense goosebumps I have ever had. I mean, it was just like head to toe static electricity. It would come and it, and it would go. There'd be times where I'm just standing alone in the corner just trying to do my thing and, and it would just, it, it'd come over you in waves. It was just the craziest things and, and, and stuff on my face. Can you turn this light back on like you did a second ago? God, get that thing, you guys. Yeah. Did you get that? Yep, I saw mm -hmm. My cheek is tickled. Yeah. Was that you, doctor? Sorry, yeah. Something just keep grabbing me in the back of the neck. I gotta get out of here. You getting touched too much? My neck is just, <clears throat> it's like, you know when you get a haircut? Yep, when it itches down. It just itches all over your hair. Okay. The whole back of my neck is just like, too itchy. Yeah, what is, still itching on your neck? Are you sure it's just not something on your neck? Yeah, that one's on my face. Oh, it's just like those, like they say, those cowboy feelings. <laughs> Yep. Anything? I got 
a lot of crap in my freaking neck, and I, it just it hasn't went away. Still huh? gets that crap on my neck though. That's really weird. I know it is really weird. Oh my head, itching. It's like tingly. Are you? I constantly all night get things like I feel like there's spiders on my face. I just like go go in my ears. My ears feel like something's tingling. Look, someone's coming. I just got if instantly someone... cold. You know what? I just got really cold on my left side. Are you by staff? Can you give us a sign that you're here? Did someone just touch my face? Do you feel something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like someone just kind of going like that. Mm -hmm. Along my jawline. Not like a burn, though. No. Just like a gentle... Mm -hmm. I heard you passed from pneumonia. I've had that before. It's not fun. I'm very sorry. Now I'm getting some goosebumps all over my entire body. All the way through my body. Keep talking, Steph. Keep going. Getting that, that touchy thing on my face. Yeah, it finally stopped on me. That's good. You can have it. Yay. Here's another one. I have goosebumps. Look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. Huh. It just happened.